Hello, everyone, and welcome into another episode of the Big Blue News Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Beesmore, and I'm actually, I actually have some exciting news. I actually now have a co-host. I'll be having Nolan Fleming as my co-host. Tell people about yourself a little bit. Well, I'm a nobody. Uh, <laughs> I haven't done anything. All 13 of my followers on Twitter, I'm sure, are excited about this. But, uh, yeah, I'm, his co I'm your co-host now, obviously. But, um, I just had a little rinky dink podcast of my own for a little bit. And, uh, you know, you've had me on here before, but I'm excited to actually stay here for a little bit. So, uh, I appreciate it and I can't wait to get started. Yeah. And just tell people about, you know, your podcast real quick. I mean, you actually have your own, correct? Yeah. Amateur sports scholars. It's just, uh, kind of a hobby we picked up a little bit, but, uh, it was fun. It's fun. We like it. We still, I'm still doing it, but, uh, you know, UK is still my thing. I think I just need somewhere to really get, you know, get that stuff off my chest instead of making everybody listen to me rant about my fandoms. Yeah, I hear you. All right, let's get into the podcast. <laughs> so we are going to talk about Kentucky and their first two games at Global at Global Jam with the tournament going on. USA, USA. <laughs> <laughs> The United States of Kentucky. Yeah, United States of Kentucky. And, man, UK, they have been performing so well. I didn't get to really see much of the first game due to me being at work. But the second game I saw in UK, they played phenomenal. Yeah, I, I didn't get to see a ton of the first game either because I also I also was wrapped up with life. But uh, <laughs> last night I watched the replay. I was very happy to not go to bed until about 2 o'clock. Uh <laughs> to watch that game if it means kentucky basketball then you know so be it and that's the way a lot of us are but uh i was really impressed by them i i thought they played well in the first game but last night was a totally different level against i mean i don't know who was really better i think canada is supposed to be better than germany uh -huh. but um and a lot closer to the competition they're actually going to go against but um i was really impressed by kentucky uh last night especially uh they really kicked it up i think a whole nother level compared mm -hmm. to the way they played against Germany. Uh, and if you listen to, like, Cal, I think he also thinks, thinks the same way. Like, they, I just – I know you're going to talk about it, I'm sure, but yeah, the offense that they're running now is completely different from what mm -hmm. it's been over the last few years. Yeah, we've got Squaggy Cal back for sure. I mean, the team went to Drake's mansion today in Canada, which I've seen videos and pictures from his mansion. It's crazy how big it is. The team is swimming currently, but – like I said, I mean, the past two games they played really great. I mean, yesterday, uh yesterday we saw Reeves go off for twenty three points, Edwards with sixteen points, and like I said, right now I'm so glad we have some veteran leaders on our team. Don't get me wrong, last year we had Oscar Sheebway, Savir Wheeler, of course, you know, didn't play, but you know, he was still on the team trying to give support or you know, some people say he quit on the team last year. But yeah, it's great to have, you know, uh, veterans on the team with Reeves and Edwards, and I'm excited to see, you know, what UK can do whenever they fully get healthy with Bradshaw, you know, uh, recovering from his injury, and then obviously you got to own in, so got hurt during the scrimmage against Africa. Yeah, and that's a shame because uh, it, it has affected Kentucky, like I think rebounding-wise especially, because uh, Kentucky actually got out-rebounded by 13 last night. Really? Yeah, so... uh that I'm, I think, uh, I think that that is going to be a, a work in progress, probably for Kentucky, especially with Onion. So, uh, if he is going to be out, he will be out all of Canada. I just, I mean, it's pretty yeah. obvious at this point he's yeah. not coming back. <laughs> yeah, he Cal won't say anything. Break. Yeah, Cal won't say anything, but I'm sure he's, I'm sure he's out. But uh, the way that Trey Mitchell has stepped up really uh, to fulfill that role, he's been really good. Mm -hmm. I think actually Trey Mitchell is going to end up being one of the most important acquisition probably during the whole off season and, and including recruitment. Cause like, I don't know what Kentucky would have done without him to be honest. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what Kentucky would have done. I mean, literally we would have had to probably run like I do the arrow at the five with, you know, you got no yen so injured and Aaron Brad <laughs> also injured. That would have been so weird. But at this point, I think a dude can do it because he's, He's he is tall, like <laughs> tall and big. Yeah, Swole. yeah, he's got he's changed. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he's been really impressive for sure the past two games. I mean, he's been able to draw many fouls. I'm not for sure how many fouls he's been able to draw, you know, the past two games, but he's been able to attack the rim, get fouls, you know, make his free throws, and then also just playing defense. He's had a couple, like, chase down blocks, and we're like, wow, where did he come from? Looking like LeBron James over here, even though a lot of people are hating on LeBron and Clutch. <laughs> yeah. Um. I just, I, I, I kind of think now, I, I don't agree with people who keep going after Onyenso about like, oh, he's the biggest, like he hadn't even played. Like, you don't even know if he's the biggest weakest on the, biggest weakness on the team or not. Mm -hmm. But I do understand that uh, I, I, I am also begging John Calipari, please do not play two seven footers at the same time. Please don't yeah. make this a thing. Cause I think the way that this team plays right now is so fun to watch. Yeah. They're so fun that they look really loose when they play. Mm -hmm. They like there's no pressure on anybody, which is a lot different from what we can say about a year ago, two yeah. years ago, yada yada yada. Yeah, I mean, last year they looked great during the Big Blue Bahamas tour. I mean, we saw last year Jacob Dop Jacob Toppin making threes, and then we didn't get to see Toppin start to shoot threes to like middle of the season this past year and we were like where did his three-point shot go you know that's a shame too because now all of a sudden because of the way last year went and the way the Bahamas was it means that people are like getting hated on for being excited about the team and I think yeah. that's a little unfair because the teams that they're playing in Canada are significantly better than the yeah. teams they played in the Bahamas you had like they literally were players Mm -hmm. in the Bahamas that had just got off a work shift or something and then went and got into a uniform <laughs> and then just played. Yeah. Like I said, I, like you said, uh, in Canada teams are a lot better. It's the under 23 tournament. And, and another player that has really stuck out to me though, Reed Shepard last night, he went insane. Um, Reed Shepard, I think he had 14 points last night. I mean, the block that he had at the end of the first half and then led to a dunk to end the first half, it was insane. People were like, wow, he's a great defender, you know, able to, like, score people or, you know, comparing it, comparing him to his father with his dunks, you know, and everything last yeah. night. Was just a fun night for sure in the BBN. I think, uh, yeah, it's going to be really hard to keep him on the bench. He's mm -hmm. going to be really good. Even in the first game, I know he didn't score, but he found a way to impact the game without scoring, and that was that's really something to be able to do that. Like, he's a lot – He's a lot better and I think a lot more special uh, of a talent than anyone really gave him credit for. Yeah, and I thought whenever I saw him during the Sweet 16 in, at Rupp Arena this past year for high school, I wasn't that impressed by his game, you know. But obviously, Sweet 16, higher competition, better competition, you know, in Kentucky. But just now seeing him play in college, you know, not even in college, but, you know, playing against other teams, live just him able to make threes you know defend the ball well and that's the one thing that UK is doing very well uh the past two games their defense it has been insane they've been able to get a lot of steals turnovers leading to fast break points where you know layups dunks or you know three-point shots and I hope they keep playing this way because half of the word fast break fast <laughs> yeah <laughs> like uh Calipari obviously likes to play fast, and this team can play fast. It is quite obvious. Last year's team, I don't think, was really capable of playing fast. I don't mm -hmm. think they had the dudes that this year's team does Yeah, to play fast. But uh, it, uh, it's quite obvious. Uh, a certain individual wrote on his sports blog that got, like, seven views that they were <laughs> going to run dribble drive uh, throughout Canada, and uh, that certain individual was right. I'm not gonna say who it was. Oh, or, who was that just, Yeah, he's just <laughs> on this podcast. But uh, um, it's pretty evident that they're gonna run dribble drive, like, or at least a variation of it. Like the DJ Wagner just is a dribble drive point guard. Like, there's yeah. no denying that. He's so quick. He's so he's really good at creating his own shots. And honestly, if Rob Dillingham has to run the point, he's really good at it. And somehow Reed Shepard is also pretty good at it. He's maybe not as capable of beating the man off the dribble or anything, mm -hmm. but he can create space and, uh, you know, draw defenders away mm -hmm. from a shooter. Yeah, and I think a big credit for this year for the dribble drive offense will obviously be with their assistant coach, with John Welch, getting him, you know, he's had so many years 
being an assistant coach in, in the NBA, and obviously his son was a walk on. I don't know if he's still like on the team as like a grad assistant. I thought he was last year. I don't think he was. This Riley year. Was. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if he is back on the staff this upcoming year, but getting his dad definitely that definitely on the staff for sure this year will help out with that. I mean, uh, we saw the shooting system that they're using with Noah's Ark, you know, and everybody yeah. was talking about that for like a whole day. Yeah, that's really nice. Uh, I, I think like you said, John Welch, he's probably going to end up being one of the most important uh, hires as an assistant coach in a long time. Mm-hmm. He might even be more important than the addition of uh, Orlando and Chen here a couple of years ago. Now they were important because like the, they kind of did get this monster class, but uh, I think yeah. scheme wise, yeah, yeah, it's John I'm, Welch, yeah, John Welch and John Calipari. I mean, John Calipari always wants to go dribble drive, you know, t- towards the rim, and he also talked about John Calipari. Also said yesterday in his interview that he loves his team because he doesn't really have to call out plays. It's like Free for all, you know, attack the rim, pass out, shoot threes, right. attack the rim. And that's the one thing I do like about John Calipari is if he can let his guards, you know, control the action and he doesn't really have to be hands on with the team as much. Yeah, that I think that's kind of the key to Cal is a great coach. Don't get me wrong, but he is a coach that need, he does need help around him. But like anyone, any great leader has the smartest people is surrounded by the smartest people. Mm-hmm. Any great yeah. coaches surrounded by the smartest coaches. Yeah. And the one thing that I'm just now laughing at after seeing, you know, our guards play with DJ Wagner, Rob Dillingham, Reed Shepard, Adu Fierro, if you count him as a guard. But just now looking at Duke's uh, tweet from the other day, they said when the best two freshman guards in college are on the same team, and I have the post right here, but oh, I yeah. found that so funny. I'm like, did they forget about these two, DJ Wagner and Rob Dillingham? <laughs> yeah, Dillingham's going to end up being a lot better than everybody expected. For, and I don't know why everyone expected him to not be as great as he is because uh, his handles are incredible, dude. I've never seen anything like it. Yeah, it's crazy, his handles. You're right. And he ha- he only played like not, not nine minutes, ten minutes, I think, this past game against mm-hmm. Canada and had like nine assists now. I'm like, wow, that's like – Crazy numbers. Only one turnover, too. One that's a really crazy uh turnover to assist ratio. Yeah. And I don't know if y'all have been listening to uh Jack Pilgrim at all, but it doesn't look like Ray John Rondo will be on the staff this upcoming year. Um, it's because he has like his own like AAU team or some sort. So basically it's going to suck that Rob Dillingham won't be able to learn from Ray John Rondo, but at least he'll get to learn from Tyler Ulysses this upcoming year still. Yeah, I, I wish we got Rondo just because I think it'd be funny. But uh, and you know, it, it people know Rajon Rondo. He's kind of he's one of the, somehow he's really famous, one of the most famous NBA players out there. But mm-hmm. I think you know temper and all that. But uh, Rondo's awesome. I wish we had him. But um, yeah, Tyler Ulis did a great job last year uh, with uh, Casey Wallace and yeah. uh, getting him to up, up his game a little bit. So I think he'll be great. Yeah, I think Tyler Ulis will definitely be, you know, a great, you know, coach for UK. Obviously, he's only, you know, a grad student right now on the team, but maybe he'll eventually become an assistant coach with UK. But yeah, I'm excited to see what Tyler Ulis can do this upcoming year with the guards. And like I said, maybe Rondo can still help out with the team. Obviously, he won't have a role on the team, but maybe he could go to practices, you know, tell players what they could, you know, improve and work on. Yeah, I really, I, I think, I mean, he probably still could, but uh, I, I don't expect it. <laughs> yeah, and uh, there's one fun, funny story I have with the uh, Rajon Rondo this past year. So basically, I'm a media member, so I get to you know be on the field for football games, be on the court for basketball games, and all that. Well, I'm on the football field just minding my own business, and I just see. I think it was maybe Twani Beckham, and he was talking to some guy with a hoodie on, and I couldn't see, like, like who he was talking to because, you know, Rondo was looking down. And then I'm right next to them, and then I see Rondo look up, and I'm like, whoa, that's Rondo. And I'm like, what's good? <laughs> and I gave him, like, a little fist bump, and <laughs> I was like, 
I didn't know that was Rondo until like he looked up, you know, at me. That's crazy, dude. Rondo, it's a it's a in a past life, Rondo would have thrown something at you probably. Oh, you think so? <laughs> yeah, he's Rondo. Like, come on, like Rajon Rondo. Have, he, I just have just him, Yeah, I just have asked him for a photo of this past year, dude. I was looking for him though. I was trying to see if I could find him, and I never saw him again. I think it was UK Louisville. I think it was that game he was at, and. I just couldn't find him on the field at all. Again, I'm like, I guess he's gone. Maybe he went to the sweet box. Who knows? <laughs> you might have scared him off. Yeah, I might have scared him off because I gave him a little fist bump. Could you imagine yeah. if I called him like Chris Paul? <laughs> yeah, that would. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Rondo, that would be that would be something though. Rondo on a coaching staff. Okay, what would Coach Rondo be like? I wonder. Yeah, I think he would be great to be, you know, an assistant. But like I said, sadly, he has like his own, I don't know if it's AAU necessarily, but he has like his own team he he coaches for, you know, and that's obviously against NCAA rules where, you know, you can't have your own team because then you can try to recruit them to, you know, whatever yeah. school you're at. So obviously yeah. it's going to suck not having Rondo on the staff or anything this upcoming year. I always thought of Rondo though as like if you've ever seen Eastbound and Down on HBO, I've always thought on HBO, I've always thought of him as like a Kenny Powers type, mm-hmm. just like a screamer or something like that. I think it's so funny. It would I be so not, great. I have not seen that. Maybe if I anyone has seen that, you'll get it. Yeah, maybe I'll have to like watch it or something. But let's finish up this podcast soon. What what is your prediction for the rest of the tournament though with Global Jam? Honestly, I have no idea. <laughs> because I, I I don't know anything about these teams, but uh I think I Kentucky plays the way they did uh last night. I think they're gonna be just fine. I think they'll win. Yeah, I they'll think, win the gold. Yeah, I think their next game is Team Africa, I believe. Their next yeah, game. Yeah, and they scrimmaged against them and beat yeah. them by twenty. So I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that Kentucky wins by more than twenty this time. Yeah, yeah, I'd say so too. The <laughs> only problem though about that scrimmage was you kinda own you and so it had to injure its ankle. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um <laughs> yeah, we don't have onions, so to get whatever. What was it? Seven blocks, six or I seven think, blocks. I think uh Coach Cal said six blocks, but yeah, that's it's, crazy. It's an insane amount, and he'll be a great rim protector this upcoming year if you know he's fully healthy, which I think he'll be fine. Come, you know, big blue madness, blue white scrimmage, you know, in a couple months. Yeah, and I just want to point out, Cal said last night in the post con in the post game press conference that he's they're going to get better, which obviously they will. He says they haven't even, like, really practiced defense or rebounding yet. And this team's already really good at defense. Yeah. Now, rebounding is going to be a problem, probably, because, like I said, they got out-rebounded pretty badly last night. Well, whenever you're tall, this player is, like, 6'9", so, with Trey Minchin. <laughs> both of your seven-footers are out, too. Yeah. Like, Bradshaw's a much better rebounder, honestly, than uh, Ugo. Yeah. Ugo will be a good a good rebounder, but still. Mm-hmm. But uh, that will be a kicker, I'm sure. Um, I just need them not to be played as post players. Excuse me. Uh, they don't need to be post players. They need to. They need to do what's best for them. Ugo, yeah. he doesn't have to score to be really good. Yeah. But uh, and Bradshaw, he's clearly not a post up big. Yeah. <laughs> like, please he, don't put him in the post. Yeah, he wants to, you know, play beyond the arc, be able to shoot. Maybe he'll run the three at <laughs> parts. <of> Maybe <laughs> I, I kind of expect him to. That would be insane if he runs the three or something at one point. But obviously, he wants to play the four, and he'll probably more than likely stay at the four. Yeah, it wouldn't shock me. Uh, again, though, I don't want that. I don't know. He could almost platoon system this team, it feels like. Yeah, I mean, you could definitely, I mean, start out the season with probably, I would say, DJ, Antonio, Justin, Aaron Bradshaw, maybe Trey Mitchell. I don't know. Like I said, so tough with the five. You could go, I guess, Aaron Bradshaw and you got to I honestly, I honestly am starting to expect, though, that at some point in the year, not because Ugo is bad. I think Ugo is going to be good this year. Mm-hmm. But at some point in the year, they're going to move Bradshaw to the five, and they're going to put Mitchell at the four. I think you have to, honestly, looking at that lineup, because it would make the most sense. Obviously, Clutch doesn't want UK to do that, or no, yeah, they're playing with Bradshaw. There's a point, I think, where you're just going to have to tell Clutch to uh, shut up. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, like, but like like I said, the perfect dream starting lineup, I think, to start out the year would be probably DJ, Antonio Edwards, uh, Mitchell, and then Bradshaw at the five, if, obviously, if he's fully healthy. I still wonder where this Bradshaw's not playing stuff is coming from because I've literally never heard anything about him not playing. Yeah. I've, every, every every time you hear anything, it's that he's playing and that he wants to play. So, like, yeah. The last, yeah, the last thing I heard was he'll be ready close to, you know, the start of the season. Yeah. So, so I don't see a reason to not believe that. And, yeah. And the people who have said it to me, I, I trust very much. So, you know, <laughs> you trust very much. But yeah. Yeah. So I think that could be the starting five. And then off the bench, you can easily have Dylan Cam at the one. Uh, then you can also have Reed Shepard at the two, Thierro at the three, Burks at the four, or maybe, you know, flip flop the three and four. And then obviously the five would be Yugano Oyen. So, so easily you can right. potentially platoon this upcoming year. Obviously, I don't think it will happen because the last time, <laughs> yeah, the last time that happened, Coach Cal can recruit for years because other coaches were like, you, you're only going to play 20 minutes if you go to UK, you know, if they platoon again. Yeah, and they're still kind of digging back from that. Yeah. That's crazy how long – people don't realize that. People always clamor for the return of the platoon, but, like, they're still trying to dig out of that hole. Like, that, yeah. that was bad. Yeah. I mean, there were so many players that got drafted, though, from that year's team, too. I mean, seven players went to the draft. I think you had, what, four players get drafted from – the seven that went that year, I mean, you had. I think they um, all. I think all of them except Aaron Harrison did. I think it was six. Yeah, six. But eight, in the first yeah. round, I think there was four. Yeah, because I remember you had Carl Anthony Towns obviously went number one. Willie went number five. Booker went like sixteenth or something. To he went like thirteenth, I think. Or actually, he went. He went after Lyles did. They were both in the lottery. Oh yeah, they. Well, I think yeah, Booker got drafted like a pick after. But, yeah, you had Lyles and Booker's four players, you know, get drafted in the first round. Yeah, and who then, else was after that? Dakari Johnson and Andrew Harrison, I think. Yeah, Dakari and Andrew. Got, I totally I forget that Dakari Dark- Dark- Johnson played here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I wish he could have stayed for another year. I mean, that team would have been, been good. Yeah, I think if he stayed for another year, I don't think UK would have lost in the round of 32 to Indiana. No, like I think that. they're a much better team that year because then you have options. And and you don't have to play Scal at the five. Yeah, because, like I said, Tyler Ulysses and, and Jamal Murray, that team should have easily been like a sweet 16 elite 18 with just those two guards that No year. doubt. And then even if if that meant Scal – and Scal should have stayed a year after he did. Yeah. Scal right. should never have left. Yeah, and, but I mean, you know, tried to play him in the post and it ruined him. So yeah. there's not there's, much you can do. Yeah, there's so many what ifs. Like, what if like Daniel Orton, you know, stayed another year, or you know, he also should have stayed another year. What would have? I, I or, honestly, Orton wasn't bad, but he wasn't great either. I don't know if Harrelson was any better than him or not. Har- Josh Harrelson was obviously a contingency plan because of Cantor, but still, yeah, yeah I still can't believe Harrelson got drafted. Unlike the sheep, that, still close my he mind. did. He did. I forgot about that. Second round to the Knicks. Yeah, Eight. and they played. He played for the Pistons a little bit with uh, Brandon Knight, I believe. Yeah, I mean, there's so many what ifs in like UK's lifetime. Where you know, what if you know there was an if they called a shot clock violation against Wisconsin? What if Jody Meeks that hurts. returned to college? <laughs> they win the title if they don't lose against Wisconsin. I still I, believe it. I agree. I think. If they I played, think it's a blowout in the next game. I think it's a bloodbath. Yeah, I think if if UK played Duke ten times, you know, I think they would have they would win like eight or nine times out of ten against. I think Duke. they would too. Uh, I honestly think if they play Wisconsin ten times, they win eight or nine times. But they just got the one. Yeah, they just and also John that. Higgins. Uh, but bear watch what we say about that because he sues people and yeah, we don't that want was that. against UNC. Yeah, in 2016-17, I remember that. That was my 18th birthday. Not, they, not fun. They, that's a terrible 18th birthday. But they also they also win the national title if they win that game. Yeah, I agree with that too. But I think we should probably wrap up the podcast soon. But hopefully, UK or Team USA they can beat Africa and then they go for the gold on Sunday. I believe it is. Yeah, they will. They'll beat Africa. Don't worry. Yeah. When is that game? I think it's tomorrow, and then the championship game is Sunday, I believe. Okay. 
I yeah. forget. I forget today is not Saturday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I had to work overnight, so it feels weird to be off, you know, today. Well, yeah, not really off, but I had to work, you know, midnight to eight. So obviously it feels weird. But yeah, I feel very confident in this year's team. Um, last year, I mean, Baylor played in this and they only went one and four, I think, last year. Yeah. Yeah. They were one and four. And uh, yeah, not nearly as good as, as Kentucky has. So. There's hope, people. Don't worry. We're not gonna suck, I don't think. Unless we do suck, then don't blame then don't blame me. Yeah, don't blame him. Blame Coach Cap. But obviously this is going to definitely be a make or break year for UK this upcoming year with how, you know, the past three seasons have gone, four seasons, if you count COVID, you know, COVID nineteen, then nine and sixteen, losing the first round, St. Peter's, and then losing in the round of thirty two to K State. So obviously I think this is a make or break year for Coach Cal. And who knows, maybe uh, we'll see Coach Cal around for a few more years, or it could potentially be his last year. He could have retired, you know? Yeah, only one way to find out, though. Yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully UK will continue to dominate in the Global Jam Tournament and, you know, be successful this upcoming year. But I think that's all I have for today's podcast episode. Do you have anything else you'd like to add, Nolan? Just listen to the podcast like 85 times if you want to. It doesn't hurt. Oh, yeah, for sure. But, yeah, I'm I'm very excited for this upcoming year. Uh, Nolan and I, we both have some big plans for this podcast episode. We're looking to book some Kentucky, former Kentucky football players right now on the podcast. So be looking out for that. Obviously, uh, I'll uh, rebrand this a little bit, get Nolan's, you know, social media on, uh, on our uh, platform so you all can follow him. But, Obviously, what is your social media? Give it out so people can follow you and, you know, listen to what you have to say as well. Well, on, on Twitter, I'm uh, at Nolan UKY uh, 27 because I'm going to UK and I guess it's my graduation year. But uh, on threads, I'm just uh, NJF 2023. So that's all that is. I don't I, I'm not letting you follow me on Facebook. Why not? <laughs> yeah, I don't want to be on Facebook. I'm good, man. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, I mean, wow, so young to be 18 again. I'm 24 only, but yeah, I appreciate you all listening to the podcast, and we're going to do some big things this upcoming year. All right, thank you all for watching, and this is Chris Beesmore signing out along with Nolan Fleming. Peace. See you.